At Tallahassee Community College, we are committed to creating an environment that is welcoming, inclusive, and open to everyone. To that end, we welcome you to this training on sexual harassment awareness. One of the goals of this training is to help employees prevent and respond to situations that may be considered sexual harassment, thereby helping to foster an inclusive environment. Tallahassee Community College strives to be a community in which all members can learn and work in an atmosphere free from all forms of harassment, including sexual harassment. In order to become such a community, we need to educate our employees on what sexual harassment is, what we can do to prevent it, how we could respond if it does happen, and what we can do to step in if we see that it is taking place. We can work together collaboratively to prevent these issues, to help members of our community know that resources are available, and to assist members of our community to know how to report the situations and to whom. Additionally, there are numerous federal and state laws, regulations, and policies that govern our work. They are in place to make sure that colleges and universities address these issues. Although these guidelines are important, we believe that the best interest of our students and employees is the driving force behind this training. We are all here to work together to prevent these issues from negatively impacting the work or education of our community members. Students who are subjected to sexual harassment will often withdraw from the college without ever telling us why they are leaving, or they will simply not return in future terms without ever saying anything. If they do decide to stay, students often disengage from their academic life, both inside and outside of the classroom. The same level of disengagement holds true for the workplace. Decreased job satisfaction, poor work performance, and lack of trust are just a few symptoms that may result from employees who find themselves in sexually harassing workplaces. Those individuals who are survivors of sexual violence or victims of sexual harassment will often have lasting trauma and residual effects in their experience. This does not go away quickly, but can remain part of the individual for the rest of his or her life. Lastly, Sexual harassment could result in legal action against individuals or against the college, resulting in a negative reputation for the college. As faculty, staff, and students, we take too much pride in our college to allow our reputation to be negatively affected by these type of situations. That is why it is on all of us to prevent them from taking place. At Tallahassee Community College, we have established a policy to help us address this very topic. The policy, currently titled Equal Access, Equal Opportunity, Discrimination, Sexual Misconduct, and Unlawful Harassment, provides a framework for communicating the stand that the college takes on this topic, as well as providing avenues for responding to any allegations of this topic. It is the policy of the District Board of Trustees to provide equal opportunity for employment and educational opportunities to all applicants for employment, employees, applicants for admission, students, and others affiliated with the college without regard to age, color, disability, ethnicity, gender identity, genetic information, marital status, national origin, pregnancy, race, religion, sex, sexual orientation, or veteran status, or any other factor protected under applicable federal, state, and local laws, rules, and regulations, collectively referred to as protected status. This policy prohibits all form of discrimination and harassment based on a protected status. All members of the college community are responsible for conducting themselves in accordance with this policy. Before we go any further, let's take a moment and unpack some of the key phrases that will be discussed throughout this course. Sexual harassment is any unwelcome sexual advance, requests for sexual favors, or other unwelcome verbal or physical conduct of a sexual nature. When submission to or rejection of such conduct is made a term or condition of an individual's academic work, 
employment, or participation in any aspect of a college program or activity, or submission to or rejection of such conduct by an individual is used as a basis for a decision affecting the individual, or such conduct that has the purpose or effect of reasonably interfering with a person's work or academic performance. Sexual violence and sexual assault is a form of sexual harassment according to Title IX. Sexual assault involves having or attempting to have sexual contact with another individual without consent. Sexual contact is intentional touching of another person's clothed or unclothed body. Sexual harassment can be viewed as a continuum of behaviors that are all unwelcome and reasonably interfere with work or academic performance. One type of sexual harassment is quid pro quo. Quid pro quo is a way to describe something for something. This is individuals in a power position expecting a sexual act or behavior in exchange for something else. An example of this would be a supervisor expecting an employee to engage in a sex act or a dating relationship, and in exchange, he or she would provide a higher salary, promotion, etc. This can be a faculty member expecting a romantic relationship with a student, and in exchange, he or she will give the student a better grade. Another type of sexual harassment is hostile environment, where behavior is severe, pervasive and or objectively offensive enough to negatively impact the work or academic performance. This could include repeated requests for dating, sexual favors, jokes, inappropriate comments, or discussion of a sexual nature, or comments and innuendos about someone's gender, gender identity, or sexual orientation. Also, any sexual assault as defined by the Clary Act and dating violence domestic violence, or stalking as defined in the Violence Against Women Act. Consent is a complex topic, but an important one to discuss with regards to prevention of sexual misconduct. Interpersonal communication and willing affirmative participation between individuals involved in sexual activity is essential and expected. Here you will find the college's definition of consent. Consent is the communication of an affirmative, conscious, and freely made decision by each participant to engage in agreed upon forms of sexual contact. Consent requires an outward demonstration through understandable words or actions, which conveys a clear willingness to engage in sexual contact. Silence does not equal consent. A person who is incapacitated due to alcohol or drugs cannot give consent. Also, consent cannot be given by someone whose disability prevents them from affirmatively communicating consent. Let's watch a quick video that will help clarify how simple the concept of consent can actually be. It's not meant to imply that this is not a serious topic, but instead is meant to provide an understanding of the concept of consent. If you have further questions about consent or Tallahassee Community College's definition of consent, please contact the Title IX coordinator for more information. Please click the play button to watch the consent. It's simple as T video. If you're still struggling with consent, just imagine instead of initiating sex, you're making them a cup of tea. You say, hey, would you like a cup of tea? And they go, oh my God, I would love a cup of tea. Thank you then you know they want a cup of tea. If you say, hey, would you like a cup of tea? And they're like, uh, you know, I'm not really sure. Then you can make them a cup of tea or not, but be aware that they might not drink it. And if they don't drink it, then, and this is the important bit, don't make them drink it. Just because you made it doesn't mean you're entitled to watch them drink it. And if they say, no, thank you, then don't make them tea at all. Just don't make them tea. Don't make them drink tea. Don't get annoyed at them for not wanting tea. They just don't want tea, okay? They might say, yes, please, that's kind of you. And then when the tea arrives, they actually don't want the tea at all. Sure, that's kind of annoying as you've gone to all the effort of making the tea, but they remain under no obligation to drink the tea. They did want tea, now they don't. 
Some people change their mind in the time it takes to boil the kettle, brew the tea and add the milk. And it's okay for people to change their mind and you are still not entitled to watch them drink it. And if they are unconscious, don't make them tea. Unconscious people don't want tea and they can't answer the question, do you want tea? Because they're unconscious. Okay, maybe they were conscious when you asked them if they wanted tea and they said yes, but in the time it took you to boil the kettle or brew the tea and add the milk, they are now unconscious. You should just put the tea down, make sure the unconscious person is safe. And this is the important part again, don't make them drink the tea. They said yes then, sure, but unconscious people don't want tea. If someone said yes to tea, started drinking it, and then passed out before they'd finished it, don't keep on pouring it down their throat. Take the tea away. Make sure they are safe, because unconscious people don't want tea. Trust me on this. If someone said yes to tea around your house last Saturday, that doesn't mean they want you to make them tea all the time. They don't want you to come around to their place unexpectedly and make them tea and force them to drink it, going, but you wanted tea last week, or to wake up to find you pouring tea down their throat, going, but you wanted tea last night. If you can understand how completely ludicrous it is to force people to have tea when they don't want tea, and you are able to understand when people don't want tea, then how hard is it to understand when it comes to sex? Whether it's tea or sex, consent is everything. And on that note, I'm going to make myself a cup of tea. Now, let's check your knowledge in a few scenarios. It's important to learn from these scenarios and understand the situations that could take place in your workplace or learning environment. In this section, you will take a look at several scenarios that could happen in the workplace. You will determine if these actions are sexual harassment and learn about what actions, if any, should take place. Imagine you just ask a colleague out on a date for Thursday night. Is that sexual harassment? Probably no. In most cases, a simple request to see someone socially would not be considered a hostile environment. However, it is recommended to always be mindful of the interest of your colleague and be respectful of their response. What if this is the second or third time you have asked the same colleague out on a date? Is it sexual harassment? Probably yes. Repeated behavior such as this could lead to a hostile environment and could negatively impact your colleague's experience in the workplace. You need to understand that your intent may not be the same as the impact on your colleague. Let's take a moment and speak about action. In situations like this, where the behavior is perceived as unwelcomed, the best course of action is to stop, apologize for the action that was perceived as offensive, and to make a commitment to stop the behavior. If you're unsure about these situations, please reach out to your supervisor or the HR director for support. There are many examples of unwelcome behaviors, such as giving a compliment to a colleague on their physical appearance. You might have good intentions, but the compliment may be unwelcomed. Consider how the message may be received and how that may affect and impact the other person. Intent and impact are not the same thing, and often a person does not intend to cause harm, yet the impact on someone else is hurtful, hostile, or discriminatory in nature. An example of this would be a person traveling at a high rate of speed, swerving up and down the highway through heavy traffic in an effort to get to work on time. The intent is to arrive at their place of work as scheduled to begin their shift, but the impact of this decision may be different. The impact is on the other drivers that may have been involved in an accident attempting to avoid this driver. This could lead to injury, financial loss, or even death. Most people would disregard the intent of the driver and look at the impact this driver had on the lives of others. It is crucial to always consider the impact of our behaviors, comments, or decisions before we do, say, or act in a specific way. We should ask ourselves, is that worth saying, or how will 
he or she respond if I do that? We need to be aware of how our decisions impact others. During a performance review conversation, your supervisor walks up behind you and begins to massage your shoulders while sharing that there's a great opportunity in the near future, but it would require you to put in a lot more time working closely together. Is this an example of sexual harassment? Probably yes. This could be an example of a potential quid pro quo harassment. Remember that quid pro quo offers can be vague and still be unwelcome and toxic to the working environment. What can you do about this situation? Resources are available through the campus HR director or Title IX coordinator to report this type of behavior. Remember, you are protected against retaliation. It's important to reach out to the Title IX coordinator to report allegations such as this or any behavior that can be perceived as retaliation. A student shares with you that they may need to leave school because of an issue. As you continue to speak with the student, she Lisa discloses to you that she has been involved in a situation with her boyfriend recently, and as a result, she just can't concentrate anymore on her academics. Lisa continues to share that her boyfriend, after he had been drinking, slapped her across the face and then had his way with her. Lisa was very embarrassed by what happened and wasn't sure what to do. Is this something that the college needs to respond to? Probably yes. The college has a responsibility to assist and support the student. The student has shared with the college that she has been a victim of some type of interpersonal violence and possibly sexual assault. It is important that the college assist her by providing her with resources and information for both on-campus and off-campus support. During a performance review conversation, your supervisor walks up behind you and begins to massage your shoulders while sharing that there's a great opportunity in the near future, but it would require you to put in a lot more time working closely together. Is this an example of sexual harassment? Probably yes. This could be an example of a potential quid pro quo harassment. Remember that quid pro quo offers can be vague and still be unwelcome and toxic to the working environment. What can you do about this situation? Resources are available through the campus HR director or Title IX coordinator to report this type of behavior. Remember, you are protected against retaliation. It's important to reach out to the Title IX coordinator to report allegations such as this or any behavior that can be perceived as retaliation. A student shares with you that they may need to leave school because of an issue. As you continue to speak with the student, she, Lisa, discloses to you that she has been involved in a situation with her boyfriend recently, and as a result, she just can't concentrate anymore on her academics. Lisa continues to share that her boyfriend, after he had been drinking, slapped her across the face and then had his way with her. Lisa was very embarrassed by what happened and wasn't sure what to do. Is this something that the college needs to respond to? Probably yes. The college has a responsibility to assist and support the student. The student has shared with the college that she has been a victim of some type of interpersonal violence and possibly sexual assault. It is important that the college assist her by providing her with resources and information for both on-campus and off-campus support. The college may be able to assist this student along with any employee in a similar situation by connecting him or her with off-campus confidential resources, connection with local law enforcement, off-campus medical assistance, or assistance with obtaining protective orders or finding temporary shelter due to safety concerns. It is vital that employees connect these individuals with the staff at the college who are here to respond to these types of concerns. 
You're at a working lunch with a group of coworkers. You've been part of this team for many years, and you know that one of your coworkers, Adam, is gay. During your working lunch, Joe, another coworker, turns to Adam and makes the comment, Don't worry, it's just that you've not been with the right woman. You notice Adam gets quiet during the rest of the lunch and leaves prior to the lunch hour ending. Is this an example of sexual harassment? Probably yes. This example really has to do with what a reasonable person in a similar situation or with a similar identity would find offensive. In this case, being aware of Adam's behaviors help you answer the question. He distanced himself and left. A hostile working environment can occur with a single incident. Although one instance may not rise to the level of hostile working environment, the impact of a single incident alone may affect the employee's experience in the workplace. Gender-based harassment does not necessarily involve any inappropriate physical contact or requests for sexual favors, but is harassment on the basis of someone's gender, gender identity, or sexual orientation. First, let's look at the parts that each person played in this situation. In addition to walking out, there are several other ways that Adam could have responded. He could have discussed the situation with his supervisor. He could have told Joe that he found the comment offensive and it needs to stop. This could have happened at lunch or a later time. What could you have done in this situation as someone who witnessed the action? You could have followed up with Adam to check in on him and ask if or how you could have helped. You could have spoken up at lunch on Adam's behalf or to express your personal offense. You could have told Joe that you found the comment offensive and that it needs to stop. This could have happened at lunch or a later time. What should Joe do now? As we noted earlier, in a situation like this, when the behavior is perceived as unwelcome, the best course of action is to stop, apologize for the action what w- that was perceived as offensive, and to make a commitment to stop the behavior. Remember, if you are unsure about any part of this situation, please reach out to your supervisor or the campus HR director for support. All members of the college community are expected to share any reports of sexual misconduct with the college's Title IX coordinator. The registering of a complaint will not be used or held against the student or employee, nor will it have an adverse impact on the complainant's educational or employment status. The college's Title IX coordinator is Renee Tolson, and she can be reached at 850-201-6074 or tolsonr at tcc.fl.edu. When a report is made to a member of the Title IX or Equity Office, the appropriate team member will reach out to the reporting party through email or telephone, offering resources, options for accommodations, and general information. Additional information will be provided to the reporting party, including the offer to meet with a member of the Title IX team to gather more information and share information regarding available resources. The reporting party has a choice whether or not to respond. Based on the information gathered, the college may still need to investigate and or follow up with the responding party or other individuals that may be able to provide more information. After a report of sexual harassment is made, there is an opportunity for the college to respond with interim protective measures. These measures will depend on the nature of the specific allegation and the specific situation that has been reported. Requests can be made for these measures through the Title IX coordinator. These can include, but are not limited to, requests for classroom and or academic alteration, requests for no contact orders, or requests for other administrative actions. There are a number of additional resources available outside the college community that can provide support for a reporting party, offering confidential support, advocacy, and outreach. These include RAIN, 
Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network, Refuge House, Domestic and Sexual Violence Center, and 211 Big Ben Hotline. For more information regarding the resources available through these sites, please contact them through the individual phone numbers or websites that are listed. The college has limited confidential resources on campus regarding concerns of sexual misconduct. TCC employees should notify the Equity Title IX office if they receive information of this nature. Every effort will be made to keep this shared information as private as possible. The college does partner with external agencies such as Refuge House and other organizations mentioned previously to offer free, confidential resources for members of our community. These services are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Please be aware that due to the confidential nature of these services, the college is not notified when reports are made to these agencies. Individuals looking for assistance from the college should notify a member of the Title IX team so the college can assist and appropriately respond. For more information regarding the college policy, please visit the TCC website or contact the Title IX coordinator, Renee Tolson, at 850-201-6074 or tolsonr at tcc.fl.edu. Thank you for taking the time to complete this important sexual harassment awareness training. Remember, it is on all of us to foster an environment free from all types of discrimination, including sexual harassment.